Guys, in this video, I want to talk about time under tension and if it is something you need to worry about with regards to your training. Before I get into that topic, guys, I encourage you to stick around the end of this video, find out how you can reach me with your questions and or comments. So excuse, excuse the environment here, guys, sitting in my car making this video because every, it's a Sunday morning and everybody in the house is asleep. So I thought I'd creep out here and get some fresh air. So guys, let's talk about time under tension. I watched a video from Jason Blaha this weekend, and I'll link it below. I want to add my two cents regarding uh, time under tension. Um, I've been doing, uh, I've been weightlifting for over 28 years, and um, as many of you know, I've been around uh, many top level lifters, bodybuilders, power lifters. I work in the industry. Um, I've interviewed everybody from Mr. Olympia Frank Zane. I've trained on the platform or I've uh, lifted on the platform, squatted right before guys like Eric Lillibridge and Ernie Lillibridge. I've talked to these guys. I've walked with these guys. I've trained with a lot of these guys. I've interviewed a lot of these guys. So I've seen a lot of the workouts of top level power lifters and bodybuilders over the last 28 years. So what does this have to do with time under tension? Well, that's a good question. Um, I have a couple theories regarding time under tension. I've read the studies, and Jason does a good, uh, a good job at covering the studies. And I will link again. I'll link his video below. But um, here's here's my thoughts on time under tension. If you have two lifters, let's say you have a lifter who's doing um, three workouts a week at about 25 total sets. That includes his warm up sets. And then you have a lifter who works out five days a week, and he has 30 total sets. And that includes his workout sets. The, the lifter who does 25 sets is going to have about 75 sets a week. Um, if, if um, let's say just for sake of argument, each of those sets is 60 seconds, he's going to have, um, let's see, 75 sets a week times 60 seconds. So he's going to have 75 minutes of work a week. The other guy who's doing 30 sets and five workouts a week is going to have double that. He's going to have about 150 minutes of time under tension. So you have a couple of extremes here. Well, not really extremes because they're, they're pretty much within the normal ranges. You have a guy that's doing 75 minutes of time under tension a week and a guy that's doing 150 minutes of time under tension a week. So here's my theory about time under tension, and I think it's an accurate one, and you can make up your own mind about what is, what is a reality and if I'm crazy. I believe there's a minimum amount of time under tension that's required, okay? Um, um, you know, you can, if you go into the gym as a beginner and you're going to do something ridiculously minimalistic, like four sets, um, you know, twice a week, I don't believe that's really going to be the most optimal and more beneficial for building muscle. So if we look at these two guys, the guy that's doing 75 minutes of time under tension, and the guy that's doing 150 t minutes of time under tension. The reality is, I've seen both of these guys succeed. I want you to, I want you to listen to that point and I want you to remember it. I've seen both of these guys succeed. It's, I'm not, my opinion, this isn't an opinion. I've chronicled hundreds and hundreds of transformation stories of people that have went from zero to hero in their, and made dramatic changes of their physique. I've interviewed Mr. Olympias. I've interviewed female bodybuilders. I've interviewed powerlifters. I've interviewed the entire gamut. I've trained with the entire gamut from Mr. Minnesota to Mr. North Carolina. I've been there, done that. I've seen both ends of these, this limited spectrum succeed. The guy with the three uh, workouts a week, the guy with five workouts a week and a little more volume. Um, the difference in this time under tension didn't impact their success. So what does this tell us? What can we learn from this? Are we just going to throw out the time under tension and just say it's, it's just totally stupid or a waste of time or something we really don't have to worry about? Well, here's what I have to say. Okay, we got these two extremes. We know they both uh, succeeded. So what we can learn from this is that there's probably a minimal amount of time under tension required to be successful. There's probably a minimal. If we go absolutely minimalist and only do three, four sets twice a week, then we're really getting down. We're, we're you know, we're probably not going to see results. But if we go up to a, to a workout that's more reasonable, like three times a week, for 45 to 45 to 60 minutes, that's going to be enough time under tension to stimulate um, muscle growth if, and we'll get to point if, and that's going to hinge on point number two.
So as long as you hit that minimal amount of time under tension, um, you're going to see muscle gains. But that hinges on two conditions, guys. And these are the most important conditions when it comes to time under tension. The first condition, once you hit that minimal amount of time under tension per workout, is the first condition for this to be successful is you have to be consistent, okay? If you have a load, and this is your back right here, and you're carrying a load, and this is your time under tension, one workout with, with that time under tension isn't going to make you into Hercules, okay? There's your back, and this is the load you're carrying. If you do this consistently for five years, guys, then you increase the time under tension in a broader sense, okay? You've increased the... There's two variables I feel are important for time under tension. That's time. Time under tension. Time. Five, three, four years. You're under that tension for three, four, five years. That's the most important variable. If you're not consistent, time under tension for one workout isn't going to matter. I know this is being Captain Obvious, but it has to be said. You have to be consistent. And the reason why I bring up this point is there's so many guys that are not consistent. They miss workouts. They take weeks and weeks off or months off. They aren't consistent for three, four, five years. So variable number one is you have to be consistent for an extended period of time. Now, with that load on your back, with that time under tension, those minutes of time under tension on your back now for three, four, five years, okay, the second variable that's important is that you increase the weight. You increase the weight over time. Now, if you have minutes, let's look at the time under tension. Um, let's let's look at uh, let's look at some uh, some mathematics, some physics. If you have these minutes, which are these time under tension minutes right here that were on your back, these are the minutes um, for three, four, five years. The cumulative minutes for three, four, five years. If you don't increase the resistance or the average weight per minute, the average weight moved per minute, you're going to have the same amount of time under tension um, over this period of time, and the t you're going to limit, you're going to dramatically limit um, one of the variables that can help increase your muscle growth. If you increase the weight, if you increase the weight, you're increasing the amount of weight per second that you're moving in that time under tension variable. Let me repeat that. When you increase the weight, you're increasing the amount of you're increasing the amount of weight per second in that time under tension variable. So you have guy A who works out, the average gym rat who's been there three, four, five years in a row, the consistent guy. And then you have the consistent guy who's increasing the weight or the amount of weight moved per second in the time under tension variable. So weight moved per second, weight per second. Let me explain this for you non-math and non-physics geeks. If you do a set of 200 on the bench press for 10 reps, that's 2,000 total pounds for those reps. You can do 2,000 total pounds for 60 seconds, and that 2,000 divided by 60 is 33.333. So you have 33.333 pounds per second. And this is just a generalization, guys. This is I'm not trying to create a formula here. So you have weight per second in that time under tension variable. If you increase that to 300 pounds, Okay, for 10 reps, that's 3,000 divided by 60. That's, that's 50 pounds per second. So just, you know, simplifying this, you have moved your time under tension, your pounds per second during this time under tension from 33.33 to 50. So you've increased the average weight per second that you're moving while under this time under tension. So guys, that's an important variable. That's the variable you need to focus on. First off, you need to be consistent, and you know I preach this in all my videos. That'll create a consistent time under tension. The second thing you need to do is increase the weight per second or increase the amount of resistance you're using. That'll, that'll create more weight per second um, while focusing on during your time under tension. So you have more weight while you're under that tension. You'll have more weight while you're under that tension. So... Um, let's backtrack in this video. I know it's been a long video, but I wanted to explain this a little bit. I've worked in the industry. Let's recap. I've worked in the industry for 28 years. I've worked with, I've interviewed guys, everybody from Mr. Olympia, Frank Zane, um, to, um, you know, I've worked with top level. I've competed with guys like Marshall Johnson. I've talked to guys like Brian Carroll. Um, I've 
lifted on the platform with guys like Eric Lillibridge. I've talked face to face with with uh, I've had you know guys like Paul Carter, Pete Rubish. So I've had both ends of the spectrum: bodybuilding and powerlifting. I've seen how they work out, and I know for a fact that guys working out three days a week are have been successful, and guys working out more five days a week have been successful. So the point being, as long as you have that minimal amount of time under tension, that minimal reasonable amount of time under tension, you're going to see you're going to see results. If you're consistent and you add more weight, it's really as simple as that. Now, if you want to go into the absurd and reduce your time under tension to some minimalistic whatever for whatever reason, just because you want to get scientific and see what you can achieve, well, then you're on your own. If you, I've seen guys work out for two sessions a week but they were about 60 to 75 minutes each, and I believe those can be successful. I believe those are a minimalistic, a minimal amount. Um, that's a minimal level that you would need to be successful in lifting. If these were full body workouts that were full blast focused on progressive overload. Now, if you want to go below that, like only one full body workout a week, I believe you could do that and maintain or maybe even make some gains. You can make some strength gains and maybe some muscle gains. I believe that's possible. But if you want to get really minimalistic and only do like two, three, four sets a week, well, guys, that's kind of getting into the absurd. It's pushing your luck and uh, so on and so forth. So take home points. There's a minimal amount of time under tension required to build muscle. And as long as you're under that time under tension, you need to take that time under tension and increase the, increase your consistency or stay under that load for a long period of time and increase the average weight per second of that load. So that's my thoughts on time under tension, guys. I hope this video has been of some help. If you have any questions or comments, there is a link below to a form Q&A. Come on over, ask me any questions that you want on strength training, muscle building, diet, nutrition, supplementation, or motivation. Guys, I also have a link below to what I call my inner circle. Um, you can ask for a very minimal amount. You can, uh, for a very minimal fee, you can join uh, the inner circle. You can have complete access to me, unlimited access for questions. I'll answer your questions. Um, any questions you have on strength training, muscle building, diet, nutrition, in a one-on-one -on -one environment for an entire year. So, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.